In chemistry, finding the oxidation numbers for elements and compounds and ions is really a key skill. So in this video, you'll learn the rules for assigning oxidation numbers and then practice to develop your skills and your memory. So let's build some rules. We'll put the most important rules first. Rule one, the oxidation numbers of each individual atom in a neutral compound, those oxidation numbers, they add up to zero. A neutral compound doesn't have a plus or minus charge after it like the ions do. So pause and classify these substances as either neutral compounds or ions. So let's find the oxidation numbers for a neutral compound, CO2, carbon dioxide. We'll learn later that oxygen usually has an oxidation number of minus 2. So based on this information, and the fact that the oxidation numbers for all the atoms in a neutral compound have to add up to zero, pause and figure out the oxidation number on the carbon in CO2. It's helpful to think of this as an equation here. We know that each of the oxygens has an oxidation of minus two. We don't know the oxidation number for the carbon. So we can say carbon is X, we don't know that, plus the minus two for the oxygen. We have the two oxygens. And that has to equal the zero because the oxidation numbers in a neutral compound add up to zero. So to solve the equation, x minus four equals zero, x, that equals positive four, and that's the oxidation number on the carbon in CO2. If we add all these oxidation numbers up, we have two times minus two, that's minus four, plus four, that gives us zero. An extension to the first rule is that when we have ions, this positive or negative charge after the compound, all of the oxidation numbers for the atoms in ions, they add up to the charge on the ion. So pause and try to find the oxidation number for each element in SO4 2 minus, the sulfate ion. We know oxygen has a minus two oxidation number. So we say sulfur, that's X plus minus two times four, we have four oxygen atoms, equals the charge on the ion. So we solve for X, and we find that X equals plus six, and that's the oxidation number on the sulfur in SO4, two minus. Speaking of oxidation numbers and ionic charge, the big thing to remember is that while they do overlap some, oxidation number and ionic charge are not the same thing. For example, the ionic charge for nitrogen is always going to be three minus. When we look at the oxidation number for nitrogen, it changes, it can be different things. For example, in N2O, it's plus four, but in NO, it's plus two. The key thing to remember, oxidation numbers and ionic charges are not the same thing. The next rule, it's easy. The oxidation number for free elements, also called monatomic substances, where there's only one type of atom in the substance, those are zero. So pause and find the oxidation number for these substances. Remember for ions like Ca2 plus or F minus, the oxidation number is equal to the charge. Another straightforward rule is that fluorine, F, is always minus one. Pause and give these a try. So in the first one, this is a little strange. Here we have oxygen is plus two, but that's because fluorine is always gonna be minus one. Two fluorines, two times minus one, that's minus two. The oxygen has to be plus two. And I hope I didn't catch you with the F2 here. It's a neutral compound and all the atoms are the same. So its oxidation number is zero. In this next rule, oxidation number and ionic charge do overlap. On the periodic table, elements in group one have a one plus charge. Their oxidation number is plus one. Group two has an oxidation number of plus two and aluminum in group 13, sometimes called 3A, is plus three. So pause and try these. Note that for Na2O2, sodium peroxide, oxygen doesn't have a minus two charge. Here, it's minus one. Peroxides, they're an exception for the rule that oxygen has a minus two oxidation number. I mean, how many more rules are there? Just a few. An important one is that hydrogen has a plus one oxidation number when it's bonded to nonmetals. When it's bonded to metals, it's minus one. 
Here's the periodic table divided into metals and nonmetals. So pause and find the oxidation numbers for the elements in these compounds. Note that in LiH, the hydrogen is negative, and it's written after the metal, after the lithium. Okay, two more rules. This one's important. Oxygen is usually minus two, with two big exceptions. Do you remember them? When bonded to fluorine and in peroxide. So pause and find the oxidation numbers for each element in these compounds. Let's give ClO3- a try. We know that oxygen has an oxidation number of minus 2. We also know that we have an ion here, so all the oxidation numbers are going to add up to the charge on the ion. So let's figure out the oxidation number for chlorine. We could say chlorine, call that X, minus 2 for the oxygen, there are three oxygen atoms, equals the charge on the ion, minus 1. X minus 6 equals minus 1. X that equals plus 5. And that's the oxidation number on the chlorine. So we found the one that we knew, the oxygen, which is minus 2. We know that it all has to add up to a negative 1 because of the charge here. And we use that information to find the oxidation number on the chlorine. The last rule. If none of the rules above apply, you can use these rules in this order. So pause one last time and give these a try. So we've done a bunch of practice in this video, but to really get it and really remember, you need some more practice. So in the description to this video, and also at the end, you'll find links to more practice. This is Dr. B with how to calculate the oxidation number for elements in different compounds. And if you made it this far, thanks for watching.